Good girl. So Mamba is now uh, six weeks old. So we actually missed her six week birthday. She's six weeks and one days. And uh, she's growing big as you can tell. She's actually, now is the first time when they can really kind of see anything. Their vision is still very poor, but they can actually see, you know, maybe a couple feet in front of their face. Whereas before this, even though their eyes have been open, they've been mostly blind, if not completely blind. So she's starting to be able to see a little bit. She's more, you know, physically able to, to travel around a little bit. And um, her instinct to follow her mother is just barely starting to kick in. So for the last couple days, she's been uh, ready to follow us when we put her down. Now because of her poor vision, she's not very good at following us. But she can, uh, she's at least starting to a little bit. Good girl. Good girl. Can you hear that little noise she's making? That's the call that a baby mink gives their mother. And they'll make that sound as they follow her, even when they're not lost. It's just a contact sound, basically. And they make that little contact sound so that she knows where they're at. They just give that little chirp, chirp, chirp. That way their mother knows where they're at at all times. Mamba! Good girl. Good girl. So what I'm doing today is I'm teaching Mamba the food call. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to call her when she's already coming because she has no idea what the whistle means. So she, when she's on her way to me, I'll give the whistle, or I could tell she's about to be on her way to me. I give the whistle and I give a piece of meat. So she'll start to associate that whistle with food and then eventually I'll progress to where I'm, I'm actually calling her to me. But today's the first steps in teaching her what the, what the whistle means and helping her to understand to come for food. So we're going to start that process today and see how she does. So the reason we're doing that today is she's actually big enough that she can see a little bit. She still not, doesn't have the vision of an adult mink, but she's starting to have some vision, whereas she's been mostly blind before this point. And she's confident enough that she's wandering away from me just a little bit. So obviously can't really teach them to come when they don't even leave you. <laughs> but she's now at the point where she'll wander off a little bit. So we're gonna start teaching her to come. Ready to go, little miss? Huh? Meh. Meh. <laughs> Mink are very small animals, so in the wild they need to keep a lookout for larger predators like birds of prey, wild cats, and canines. Because of this, some mink can be quite nervous around new sights, sounds, and smells. Their natural self-preservation instinct can at times be quite annoying when you're out hunting or trying to get a job done. For example, we might be trying to do a pest control job at a park, and the mink is so scared of the buzzing of a lawnmower in the distance that they refuse to work and sometimes won't even return when called. One thing I like to do with my baby mink is carry them around every place I go and expose them to as many strange things as I can. Exposing my mink to strange sights, sounds, and smells helps her to be less nervous of new things as she matures because her entire life has been full of new things. Also, this exposure to new things has the added benefit of stimulating her brain, helping it to grow and develop properly. What do you have in your little baby carriage? You've got a black mamba in your baby carriage. 
Yeah, it's a little mink. Where are you taking Mamba? Yeah, it's Mamba. Oh, you stuck on the bump? There you go. Oh, she's starting to cry. Oh no, she's crying. I think she wants her mommy. You better pick her up. Hey, Mamba. You scared? Come here. Come up in my sweatshirt. There you go. There you go. Good girl. Spending so much time with a baby mink also helps to create an important bond between me and that mink that will last throughout her entire lifetime. This special bond can only be created while the mink is young and impressionable. The bond I create with my mink during the first few months of life cannot be created at any other point in the mink's development. So if I miss the opportunity to bond with her early on, I will never get another one. What you doing with your mink, Olive? You got a dirty shirt. Look at that it's dirty shirt. Oh, it's your little mink. Yeah, this is embarrassing putting you on TV with all your dirty shirt. Yeah, but you're too cute with little miss. Oh, what? Oh, she gonna get you? She's asleep. She doesn't bite in her sleep. Uh huh, the mamba. Oh, she's such a good girl, this mamba. Yeah. Yeah. You want to take mamba outside? Is that what you're saying? Mamba's sleeping. She won't have fun outside. She's too busy sleeping. Yeah. Another thing that is important to me is that mamba creates a bond with my little girl, Olive. Oftentimes, a mink who bonds with a human at a young age becomes what I call exclusive. Now, not all mink raised from a young age become exclusive, but it is quite common. Exclusive mink only like the one or maybe two people who they are bonded to, and often bite everyone else. Mink aren't anything like dogs who you can just simply socialize from a young age, you know, introducing them to new people all the time so they grow accustomed to meeting strangers. Well, for whatever reason, this just doesn't work with Mink. They could be introduced to new people every day from a young age, and then one day, something will just snap in their head, and they will start to show aggression towards every human other than the, you know, one or two that they're already bonded to. You wanna come out? This video shows a perfect example of an exclusive Mink. This is Theomba Sabe, who I raised from a young kit before I married Maggie. Theomba had that special bond with me, and it's very obvious how affectionate she is towards me. But watch how aggressive she is with Maggie. Oh, 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 hey, oh, oh. stay away from her. Don't bite her feet. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I'll spank your butt. Oh, I <laughs> should have come. Stay here, stay here, stay here. Oh, okay. See, that's the difference. <laughs> She's all sweet to me, and then she goes oh, after Maggie. Oh, <laughs> my feet. Mink tamed as adults are almost never exclusive, and typically they treat all humans the same. A mink tamed as an adult sees all humans as just basically friendly monsters that he's learned to trust and come to for food. Even though the adult mink has come to trust humans, they still see them as basically a friendly predator, not another mink. Mama. A mink who is raised by humans from Mama. a young age sees all humans Mama. as basically just another mink. So like mink love to fight with each other, a mink imprinted on humans will often want to bite all humans who they haven't built that close special bond with from a young age. Once a mink builds that special bond with a person, they never build a bond with another person later in life. It doesn't matter how hard you tried, once a mink grows past roughly, you know, eight to nine weeks of age, they typically are incapable of creating that special bond with a human. Look at that bulldog. I can take the meanest adult mink from the fur farm and tame it so that I can hold it barehanded. 
but I cannot take even the most laid back of exclusive hand-raised mink and make it my friend. Now, having said this, like I mentioned earlier, not all mink raised from a young age become exclusive. Some bottle-raised mink are friendly towards all humans, and though they may have a special bond with one or two people who raise them from a young age, they don't see everyone else as enemies the way exclusive mink do. Because of the strong possibility that Mamba could grow up to be exclusive, I want to do my best to make sure she has a strong bond with both Maggie, Olive, and I. Unlike adult mink, baby mink are typically quite afraid of water. This natural hydrophobia in young mink probably sounds quite strange for an animal that spends the majority of its life in or around water. But fear of water at a young age is also normal in the mink's cousin, the river otter. The reason for their fear of water is obvious if you think about it. Baby mink who are not afraid of water are more likely to fall into the water before they're mature enough to handle swimming and will likely drown. So their fear of water at a young age is nothing more than self-preservation tool that keeps the baby mink alive until they're old enough to swim around while following their mother. Most mink kits avoid swimming till they're right around, you know, eight to nine weeks old, sometimes even older. Mamba, on the other hand, she shows her bold attitude by fearlessly taking to water at only seven weeks old and with far more confidence than most eight or nine week old mink do when they finally do take their first swim. Watching her fearlessly swim around like a pro gives me the hope that Mamba will be fearless like her father Brock, and hopefully she'll grow into a good fishing mink too. One of the important things about these little walks is bringing the caching box. We want her, her to start homing in on the box as her little safe place, her little home away from home. And as you see, that's worked quite well. She's already gone in here to dry off in her little towel and um, she's, she's homing to this spot as her little, you know, safe, dry haven from the world. And we want her to start seeing the <clears throat> caching box as, box as such because that's what's going to encourage her to take her kills back here is when she considers this her little safe place. And so it's important that at this young age we start introducing her to that idea that this is the safe place, this is where she goes to dry off, to rest, to get away from things that are scary. And then that makes it so she's so much more inclined to uh, take her kills there um, when we're hunting at an older age. On our next episode, we're going to do a little bit of caching training, and we just might take Mamba on her first hunt. So don't miss next time on Black Mamba Born to Hunt.